And if you don't bloom, you are going in the trash, going in the trash, going in the trash. Hey guys, it's me Astrid, and today I have an update for you on my catacetum orchids. Here's a catacetum. This is a catacetum orchid. I have a load of them behind me. Now this summer, I had a lot of tough times in my life, and my catacetum orchids got really badly infested with thrips. There were thrips coming out the ass up in this greenhouse, like not in this room. This isn't a greenhouse, it's a room. Not my ass, but like the catacetum's asses, if they had them, would definitely also be full of thrips. And I wanted to show you the, the progress that they've made um, after I treated them, what I did, and what they're kind of looking like now. So, yeah, thrips are nasty, nasty little bugs. Um, they suck if they, they're little tiny, like, white... They look like little tiny white clear fleas, kind of, and they'll show up all over one of your plants, and they suck little divots into the leaves. Um, they kind of, yeah, they just give the leaf like a silvery appearance. It's almost similar to spider mite damage, and they can really, really wreak havoc on a plant because what they do is they get in and they suck the juice out of the leaf, and then the leaf doesn't grow, and the plant can't photosynthesize as well, and the plant's like, blah, I'm being attacked came out to have a nice time and honestly I'm feeling so attacked right now. So then the growth kind of shrivels up and dies. So I wanted to show you on different catacetum plants that I have what types of progress they've made since I have treated this. I also wanted to tell you really quick how did I treat these. Well, my wonderful friend Roth Rock from my local orchid society was like Girl, I see you're having a tough time. Let me buy you like five different kinds of pesticides and it's like a choose your own adventure. And I was like, yes, please help me. Thank you so much. You so much. Thank you, Roth Rock. Thank you so much. Uh, the most fun uh, solution for the thrips that I thought was the predatory nematodes that Roth Rock gave me. Now, nematodes are this little worm-like critter um, that lives in the dirt, like, everywhere and in the water everywhere, and they range in size from teeny tiny itty bitty to, like, sort of not tiny. Some can be harmful to animals and humans, others are harmful to just insects, some are harmful to plants, like, it just depends. It's a really diverse family of organisms. But the predatory nematodes they sell in the horticultural world are devastating if you're an insect. If you're a mammal or a bird or something, doesn't matter. But if you're an insect, watch out because then predatory nematodes are going to burrow into you and eat your insides from the inside out and leave a husk. I'm not totally sure that that's what they do, but I'm pretty sure that that's what they do. So between like applying predatory nematodes and getting my green like my orchid room infested with spiders and I was like oh my children and I just took like the hundreds of baby spiders and just put them onto my plants I managed to do a very natural method of pest control on my orchids um, the nematodes are really easy to apply you shake them up in a gallon jug with water so they get like awake and dispersed and then you just water your plants, all your plants with them, and it, like one little packet of nematodes is under $10 and it'll treat like an ass load of plants. So yeah, the other great thing about nematodes is that they live for a while so long as the soil's kind of moist. They can stay alive for a while so they'll keep murdering the shit out of pest insects for a while, which is great. Now let's talk about like the changes that my orchids have made since I've treated them. So, catacetums, I really like catacetums because they're tenacious little plants. Let's look at this one. So this one, um, the, old, the old growth is right here. Will this focus? Yes. The old growth is right here. And this is the older growth. So it's like year one, year two, and then this is year three. This is the year I got it, and this is when it was attacked by nematodes. This is, or attacked by uh, thrips. This is how big the growth got. It's so small, it dwarfs even in comparison to like the year before last's bulb. And it lost all of its leaves. Um, it was really a wreck. And then I treated the thrips, and it grew two new leads. So it grew this little one, and it grew this one. I've been leaving my lights on a bit longer so that they can get more 
light exposure and warmth so that the growing season is a little bit extended because of all the damage that they underwent this growing season. But what a trooper. And now this plant will have two leads from which it can grow two more new leads next year. Maybe more if we're lucky. This catacetum has a similar story. Again, here's the oldest back bulb, second oldest, and then this year's back bulb. And you can see this new growth that has arisen since I treated the thrips, um, which was in mid-July, I believe, has grown to be almost the size of this one. So what I predict will happen next year is that this one and this one may produce new leads. I don't know that for a fact, but I like to think that that will be a possibility. And this one is still, it's in full growth. It's got these nice leaves, lots and lots of sticky sap on the underside, just loads of sap. Um, but yeah, it's, my hands are so sticky after I handle my catacetums. But yeah, this one is doing really well also. This is the third catacetum I wanted to show you as an example of something that will recover really well. And mind you, one of these it was um, a species, so they all have done recovering really well. The species and the complex hybrids. This one um, is Catacetum Dreamboat. It didn't bloom for me this year, of course, because it was really attacked by the bugs. But check it out. Here's the oldest bulb, the second oldest bulb, this year's first bulb, and then this year's new recovering growth. This, I mean, this one is nice, tall, skinny, right? It didn't get plump enough last year because I didn't water quite as much as they needed or fertilize, but it did get really big. And then this year's growth was like half the size of that, so half the size of both of these older ones in some kind of way. But now this one, it's nice and big. It's even it's even laying down new glorious roots. This one had an amazing root system to begin with, which really, really helped the plant probably to recover. And um, this bulb is starting to plump out. So by the end of the growing season, I predict this will probably have, you know, maybe it'll be one third again what it is now. And, and it's doing just wonderfully. It has some spots on the leaves. I'm not really sure why, but I'm not too concerned because I can't see that it's caused by a pest. But this is the recovery it's made in just a couple months. These are fabulous growers. One more thing that I wanted to show you before we leave is one of my propagation experiments. It's like the most successful one, and I just wanted to give you a little close up on this guy. Ta-da! This is a bulb. Now when I was repotting all my catacetums um, this year, I ripped a back bulb off of basically every single one. And um, this back bulb was just some little dinky thing, just some little nothing that I ripped off of a plant. Just, And I put it in moss and it made this new growth. And the new growth is almost now the same size as that little back bulb. This plant is going to grow into just an amazing healthy full plant and all it took was this little like like barely two inch tall back bulb. Catacetums are amazing at propagating. They're really easy to propagate. I probably could have cut this in half, cut the top off of it and put it down on the moss and it still would have grown something. They're that impressive. So I just wanted to show you one of my propagation experiments. Now I didn't keep track of what each one was. I know one of them is a Fred Clark Yara After Dark SVO Black Pearl and some others like are all different kinds that I have but they're all gonna be cool and I can't wait to see them get to blooming size. Yay! Well that's all I have to say about catacetum updates. Um, my catacetums had a bad growing year. It was really really bad. Next year I plan to actually fertilize them and I plan to, if they get any bug infestations, treat them right away, given that I won't be depressed or some other like very tragic thing happens in my life. So, yeah, orchids, orchids never fail to impress me. They, they are, you know, non-sentient beings to our knowledge, but they inspire me and encourage me and, and just they give me life, really. Like, I, I had such a hard time taking care of them this year, and they are all fine. I don't think I lost one, 
even though I wasn't watering them for like two weeks at a time and they got super infested with parasites and everything was bad, they pulled through for me. So I'm going to pull through for them and I'm going to give them a good year next year. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day and happy growing. Bye.